Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture on the memory based question. This is the fifth video I will cover related to the CSR net December 2023. Again, this video is again fully shortcut tricks I can solve with you. Myself Dr. Harishkar, you can find the previous four videos on my YouTube channel Dr. Harishkar playlist the CSR UGC net and you can see the memory based question related to the LPP and the integral equation again with the help of the shortcut tricks and other three lectures here. Apart from them, you can see the other P by question series topic wise in this playlist. So let's start with this video. The question is out of them, this is my one and this is my two. Which one of them is the convergent? Only one, both, one and two, only two or neither one or two. A very simple approach I can tell you. Always remember, as I always remember, whenever there is a term of the sine and cosine and this divided by something, what I gave you a shortcut tips is always a n b n. This is a series. Okay. So what is the property behind that? If you prove that if b n is my approaches to the zero and decreasing, however, a n is my bounded. If you prove these two properties, then by using the Dirichlet test, this series is my convergence. So if you look about that, if I consider a n is my sine n pi over 2 and b n is my 1 over root n. So clearly say this is my bounded function. This is my decreasing and goes to the 0. So both the properties are satisfied. Yes, this is my convergent series. Fine. Now look at the second option. Now since this is not in terms of the sine and cosine, then how you can think about that? Again, a very simple. I can simply choose a n to be here and b n is my 1 over n square. So what is my a n over b n? It is n square log of this one. Then if I take the limit as n approaches infinity, it is my infinity into 0. So otherwise I can take this function as this one. Fine. Now again what I told you the shortcut tricks available in these lectures is whenever you want to find the limit of f of g, whenever this is of the form 1 raised to power infinity, I can change them into the f into g, limit of this. Now clearly say if I take n approaches infinity, this value will be 1 plus 0 raised to power infinity. That is of this nature. So what is the answer of this? It's a log e raised to power f into g. Fine. Now take the limit as n approaches infinity. This will be the cancel out. So it's a log of e. Log of e is my 1. So now which is a finite and this is my convergent by using the p test. So once this is a convergent, so this is also convergent. So yes, both are my convergent is the right answer of this problem. A very simple approach. Remember these two shortcut tricks as I already gave you in my previous lectures at here. Look at this another one. An is given to be here. Supremum. Okay, fine. What I told you earlier. You, you can see the lecture on the limit infimum and the supremum which is available at my here. I can solve the same approach. Where is the lecture is? You can see this is my infimum and supremum lecture. Fine. So how you can solve that? I can take n is even or n is odd. When n is even, its value will be my positive n pi over 2 plus n pi over 3. And whenever n is odd, it will be my n pi over 2 plus n pi over 3. So which is, I can say this is cos 5 pi by 6 and this is cos, what is that? It's a n pi over 6. Fine, it is even and odd. Now look at that, limit supremum is my here. That is a wrong answer. Why? Because whatever the limit of this, the supremum and the infimum is always lies between minus 1, 2 plus 1, but it is a n. It is not true. Limit supremum of a n when a 2 n, 2 n means n is even. So what is the supremum of this limit? It is always 1. That is a correct option. Infimum of a n, a n is my complete, even and odd. 
so the minimum is my minus 1 3n 3n consists of even as well as or both so you can see the minimum the supimum supimum is always be the one so again this option is my cancel out so the right answer will be my only b is the right answer look at this another one a is the real symmetric matrix what does it means you can consider any of the real symmetric matrix say let's say a is equal to i whenever it is okay we all know every real symmetric matrix is diagonal whenever is a real matrix so eigen values are always positive and real so this option is also correct a is any real symmetric matrix so if i choose a is equal to i then a raised to power k exists for some k yes it's always for all k then a square is equal to i definitely is my correct answer a raised to power k is my zero what does it means it means it's a nilpotent matrix once is a nilpotent matrix all the eigen values are my zero and since i this is my real symmetric matrix the only possible value of matrix is my zero matrix so once a is my zero and a square is my obvious b zero so the right answers are a b c d all are my correct answers look at this another one a function is given to be here okay so as i gave you the earlier tips if have you have the function of f1 and f2 if both are my continuous then this capital f is my continuous you can see both are my polynomial so every polynomial is my continuous so it is my continuous f is differentiable since when it will be the differentiable when f i is are my differentiable then it is also be the differentiable once the function is differentiable you can also see the partial derivative exists whether it's a uniform continuous it may or may not be why it depend upon what is the value of the a b c d e f whether it's a part of the r whether it's a part of the z whether it's a part of c and here so we can't say anything right answers are a c d are the right answers so you can see within a very simple shortcut tricks you can solve this all the question within a 15 second trick i will come up with the next videos uh, again with the help of the four questions you can till now you can simply like share and comment on my video best of luck students happy learning